are you? Stop! What are you trying to do? Kill me? What? Did you see him? Damn burglar! Swear I saw a shadow. Ah, you did! Mine! You just shot it through the head! My Rudy, oh the Eye of Satan gun! Oh, I say, Your Highness, what terrible bad luck. Well, it was priceless, wasn't it? Yes, Mr. Fortescue. And these premises are surrounded by an electrified wall, and my bodyguard is still outside the gate. The culprit, I think, is still on the premises, and so, of course, is the ruby. Hey, you don't think one of us took it, do you? My men will see that no one leaves. I have read that you have the best police force in the world. Let us see if it is true. Get me the police. Welcome back to another series of Who Done It. Now, what you've just seen, or rather just missed seeing, is someone nicking the Maharaja's ruby. Incidentally, what the Maharaja shouted in his native tongue just now is roughly translated as Chelsea to Liverpool Nort. It shows that he's either born optimist or a blithering idiot. However, this is all happening in 1925, so until someone looks the score up, I shan't question it. But questions will be asked later by our panel, and this week they are one of our leading comedy actresses, whether it is as Mrs. Big or as Mrs. Basil Fawlty, in real life, of course, the lovely Prunella Scales. <laughs> and now a gentleman who tips you horses and fights your flab at the same time, Terry Wogan. <laughs> the next, a man who's known to you as an air raid warden, but known to me as my country cousin, Bill Pertwee. And our last panellist is a member of the public. Now, TV Times run a whodunit competition recently, and as a prize, one of the winners will be a guest panellist in each show. Now, this week from Watford, will you welcome a very bright 14-year-old, Hugh Davis. <laughs> well, now let's see if you can spot the guilty party before they do. There are at least three good clues to look out for, but always remember that the thief or thieves is allowed to lie. Now, while I've been introducing the panel, the local police has arrived in the shape of Constable Ferret. I suspect he had his name changed in order to get the job. Anyway, he's just raced up from the village on his phantom bicycle, and we join him as he's completing his first vital task, removing his cycle clips. Now, sir, as I understand it, you are a guest of Captain Nickerson's, mm. and you've lost a valuable pencil. Constable. Oh, excellent. You have lost a valuable jewel. Yes, the eye of Satan is a ruby the size of a pigeon's egg. Big ruby. When did you last see it, sir? Oh, well... Perhaps if I were to explain the circumstances, Constable. Oh, thank you, Captain. Well, may I say the wife and I enjoyed that brace of partridge. Very tasty, because there was well on. Oh, My ruby! Strange coincidence about that, sir. Well, other things have been stolen from here? No, but my wife's name's Ruby. Am mm. I right in thinking you are not the head of Scotland Yard? Uh, Constable Ferret. Uh, uh, the Maharaja is naturally very upset. And as his host, so am I. You see, the Ruby was a family heirloom. Now, I insisted that it was put in my safe because I received this note. Now, as you'll see, it, 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 it informs me that an attempt will be made to, to steal the jewel. And to avoid identification, the sender has composed a note entirely with letters cut from the Times newspaper. Cutting up the Times? A fellow must be a waving lunatic. How do you know it was the Times? <laughs> my dear Miss Hampshire, the type is unmistakable. Now, the envelope containing that note came through my letterbox this morning. That's a clue, sir. <laughs> it's someone what reads the Times. Uh, or possesses a pair of scissors. Who are you, sir? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, I haven't introduced my guests, have I? Uh, this is Baron von Halstedt, the uh, the German flying ace. Oh, that's that cocky boss you shot down, isn't it, sir? <clears throat> I ran out of fuel, or it would have been a different story. 
Well, either way, the war's been over seven years, so you can go home now. Uh, yes, and this is uh, Mr. Gay Fortescue the Gambler. Twenty to one you don't solve it, Constable. You're on for five, Bob. No taken and done, sir. <laughs> You'll be lucky he's skint. Didn't you read it in the papers? He lost his shirt at Blades. He's in debt for thousands. I refuse to sit here and be insulted. Well, stand outside, then. Uh, I'm afraid she's not very used to champagne. <laughs> not used to it. After my act, stage door Johnny's queue up with bottles of it. <laughs> Miss Hampshire does a very daring trapeze act on the London stage. I strip down to me undies on the eye wire, and I don't use a net. Yes, <laughs> nerve enough, in fact, to commit a wobbly. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely devoid of any bleeding. Hey, 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 calm down a bit all night. Now, who's this gent? Oh, this uh, gentleman is also in the theatre, Mr. Page. Otherwise known as the Grand Maestro. <laughs> the greatest illusionist and mind reader of the century. And this is my assistant, uh, Miss Vera Legrand. <laughs> uh, ooh. You must, uh, you must come and see me soar in half sometime. Or make her disappear from my magic box. Oh, hocus pocus, eh? Oh, we've got a young lad in the village who can do all that while he's picking his nose. I also hypnotise. You can't get me with that, sir. I already have. You already think that this is your very own watch, given to you by your father on your 21st birthday, which fell on July the 22nd, 1910. It is my watch. Uh -huh. I never felt a thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Grand has a very delicate touch. I could book you for that. Oh, not without your own custody. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is a waste of time. On the contrary. Constable, there's still the matter of the light on the hill. What's that, sir? After the shots. Shots? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, well, I took a pot with my elephant gun at a shadow I saw in the garden. Aimed high, of course. Oh, oh, oh. oh just as well, sir. You're one of the finest shots in the world. Ah. Thanks, all right. <laughs> and after the shots, we all dashed into the gun room upstairs, and looking out of the window, I saw a light, possibly a lamp on the hill, um, on the other side of the, the road. And then I saw another light descending slowly from the sky. Uh, I saw that. It was an falling star. That's supposed to be luck, Kay. It was a sign from heaven, the curse of the eye of Satan. Legend has it that great evil will befall anyone who steals the stone. Oh, poppycock. Well, Constable, what are you going to do now? No, uh... <coughs> I'm afraid uh, I'm going to have to search you all. <laughs> I thought you'd never ask. Welcome back to Who Done It. Uh, I apologise to those of you who are hoping to see Gillian Hampshire take all her clothes off, but I can reveal that nothing of interest was found. Uh, well, to be fair, nothing of interest to this robbery. Now, we're trying to find out who stole the Rajah's ruby. And if you've got all the answers already, there must be something wrong with you because we haven't shown them all yet. You can assume that everybody would gain by stealing the ruby, including the Maharaja. Insurance, maybe. Well, the year is 1925, and Constable Ferret is looking very embarrassed at what he's just been shown by everybody. Sorry about the search, sir. It's normal procedure. Damned impertinence. Oh, but such lovely hands, Constable. Uh, um, perhaps we can go back to what happened uh, at the time the duel was put in the safe. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Well, that was a couple of days ago. It's remained had got, um, you got to your room to get your pipe, had not you? Yes, yes, that's right. And uh, he saw the note on the doormat. Well, I took it sufficiently seriously to insist that the ruby was put in my safe, which is in the gun room. But I'm always getting threats. That's why I have my bodyguard outside the gates. No one can get in here. Better safe than sorry, eh? Look. Yes, talking of the safe, let me show your highness. Yeah. Now, each of these dials operates a separate lock. Uh, six, five, four, three. So it'll enti be entirely safe, your highness. Mm. Your Highness, mm? may 
I hold it before you take it away? Oh, I don't know. Uh, oh. Thank you. It's very heavy. Really tight. Hmm. The vibrations are very strong. Many have died for this. True. Since it was found in 1776, much blood has been spilled. Oh, oh my no, no. Uh, Sorry. Allow me. Yeah. Magnificent. Excuse me. You. What? Oh. Uh, surely. A good cracksman with a stethoscope can hear the locks click back as the right number's found. Yes, but not and click back until the correct sequence is obtained. Oh. In this case, 6453. You have a go, Tremaine. Now pull the lever and all four locks are released at once. Oh. Hey, Presto. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, Your Highness, uh, if you'd care to select four figures at random and turn the dials accordingly. Ah, uh, numbers. Uh, no, no. What, do, what shall I choose? Hmm? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, 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 of course. Yeah. Uh, would, would you all please turn your bags? Yes, of yes. course. Mm. Yeah. Turn your bag, please. Second. Ooh, Third. Fourth. Now what then? Ah, yeah, sorry. Uh, pull the lever. Pull the lever. Now spin the dials. The confused one would be adversary, huh? <laughs> So, having said the combinations, we all settle down to enjoy the weekend. In fact, I assumed that the note was a practical joke until this evening. Oh, it certainly is a mystery, sir. Oh, may I ask what, uh, what's happened to your cook and housekeeper, then? Oh, yeah. yes, well, they went away for a brief holiday. Oh, you see, Mr. Tremaine here is a cordon bleu chef. He undertook to do the cooking. And a splendid job he's made of it, too. He spent most of his time in the kitchen. I used to think I'd marry for money. But after Mr. Tremaine's cooking, I'm not so sure. Oh, thank you, my dear. Now, the truth is, I can't stand guns. A lot of banging gives me a headache. And they were in the garden all afternoon, making the most terrible racket. All of them? All except Tremaine, of course, who was busy at his stove, stuffing a pike or something. And we were betting on clay pigeons, do you see? You ready, old chap? Release! Oh! oh, yes, oh, 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 oh. Release! Oh, 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 damn, missed it. Well, you win the bet, Nickers. Well, give you longer odds tomorrow, eh? Oh, taken and done, sir. <laughs> now, anybody fancy pheasant for supper tonight? Oh, oh pheasant, pheasant. Yes. Good. Well, my gamekeeper always has a few hanging. I'll get him to bring some up. I say, Nickers. Yes? He was your batman during the war, wasn't he? Ah, oh, yes. Most reliable chap in the world. Do anything for me. I Would you, uh... Do you mind? Oh, my dear chap, I never give a gun loaded. I should hope not. Got a rather novel way of communicating with him. Ah, you see, in this tube, I've got a minute parachute, right? Yeah. Now, get me a note for the pheasant, attach it to the weight here, mm -hmm. securing it with a rubber band. The tricky part, there we are. Now then, we screw that into there, like so. Now, if I aim for the top of that fir tree, the parachute will drop bang by his cottage. Good lord. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's uh, ingenious in the extreme, but um, how will he know to look for it? Oh, he knows the sound of the gun. Runs like a retriever when it pops off. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fingers in your ears, lads. Oh. Oh. Has the war started again? <laughs> I say, where have you been, old man? You've missed all the fun. Uh, up to my room to get a cigarette. The English ones are too strong. Look. I found this by the flower beds. Ah, yes, pigeon's egg must have fallen out of an ass. So delicate. I tell you what, shall I show you how we blow them? What you need is a pin. Oh. Very well then, ladies, turn your backs. Mm -hmm. Now then, hold that, hold that. Ah, there we go. Good. Yeah, 
clean as a whistle. Oh, oh. I think I'll put the egg back in its natural surroundings. Oh, right. Uh, right. Natural surroundings. You paint very well, Captain. Yeah. Yeah, so, so after the shooting, we all had a rest. Uh, yeah, yeah, except for Tremaine, that is, who had to do his cooking. <laughs> then after dinner, I came up with this cracking good game called Kill the Tiger. <laughs> and that's what you were playing when the safe was done? Uh, yes, yes. Mm. Well, where was everybody else? Oh, we were all creeping around the house with the lights out, you see. The idea is that I have to get to my lair in the cellar without being caught. <laughs> now, I can uh, I can use the main staircase, or the servant's stairs, or, or the fire escape. Well, the fun, what? I was terrified. I hid in the cupboard. In the gun room? In the kitchen. Mm. Question is, where was everybody else? Now, I was in the garden, as you know. I was considering going up the fire escape, attack, being the best means of defence. I climbed on top of the bookcase in the hall, waiting to take the tiger by surprise. And he made me sit under the bookcase as bait. I say, how very unsporting. You certainly didn't complain, sweetie. Where were you, sir? Hmm? Oh, I was in the cupboard with Miss Hampshire, soothing her. In the gun room? In the kitchen. But I thought that was Mr. Tremaine. It was very dark. I was in the cellar waiting for my prey. <coughs> I was in the bathroom opposite the gun room. I'd locked the door, turn on the light. I was browsing through the Times newspaper, a number of copies of which were on a shelf. Incidentally, last Thursday's was missing. Oh, thereby mutilating the missing page. Of course, it could be two people. If it was a two-handed burglary, one could be lying for the other. Two-handed robbery. You've got a point there, sir, and it's given me the clue that solved it. Oh, I don't believe that. Double the bet if I tell you where the ruby is as Take, well. Taken and done, sir. <laughs> well, that, sir, poses a problem. What? Oh. What's, what's 40 times five shillings? Well, mental arithmetic being my forty, I make that um, ten pounds. So who is the hot, who is the odds on? Who is the odds on favourite in your book? <laughs> I don't worry too much if you don't ever read the Times. We only put that bit in because in 1925 there wasn't such a thing as page three of the Sun. <laughs> now then, panel, is there any part of the action or second part of the action that you'd like to see again, Terry? Well, the first thing I'd like to ask you, really, is are those fish in the tank red herrings, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're piranha fish and they eat disc jockeys. No. <laughs> I think, we'll I think in those. fact, I think, in fact, they were red herrings because they were swimming on the left of the tank. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we ever ask him? I've no <laughs> idea. <laughs> yes, Terry, what the would you like to see? The thing I'd like to see was uh, what I took to be a little piece of slate of hand, as I say, it could well be a red herring where the great maestro drops, or pre pretends to drop, the jewel, the great ruby. Right. Yes, Prunella. I'd like to see the very first sequence where Captain Nickerson is under the tiger skin, uh, up to the point where he fires out of the window. So you shall. Hugh? I'd like to see where the Maharaja asks everybody to turn around when he selects a new numbers for the safe. The combination. The combination, that was it. Mm. Right. Bill. I'd like to see it all again about five times. <laughs> <laughs> so you shot. Yes. What I'd, would like you like? See, I'd like to see the blowing of the egg piece again, please. Being the bird watcher that you are, yes. <laughs> all right. Blowing the egg for Bill. Blowing for Bill. Right. Now let's start with some questions. Oh, one question each before replays and then one question in between. Terry, let's start off with you. Uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Nickerson. Captain Nickerson. Captain I think. Yes, yes, Captain Nickerson. Nickerson. Oh, if I may call you Nickers. Yes, by all means, yes, by all means, um, yes, certainly. What is your financial situation? You have a big <laughs> estate to run, have you? Modest, modest. 
Do you have enough money to run the estate? Well, it's pretty tight. Yeah. <laughs> pretty yeah. tight. Yeah. But uh, I'd say we manage just about. I suppose we may have to sell off a few acres sooner or later, but, you know, mm. we're, we're keeping our fingers crossed. Huh? How do you come to know the great maestro? Well, he was, uh, he was doing um, a, 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 what do you call it, a concert. concert you, you know. concert troop concert during the war, and then uh, I happened to go to this show where uh, Miss, Miss Hampshire was uh, mm -hmm. doing her um, thing, and um, he was in the same bill. So I, I, I naturally, um, you know, invited him for a drink, and uh, we got on very well, so I said, come now, here we go. Nothing snobbish about Captain Nickers. No, no not at all. Good mixer. Quite right. Brunella. Mr. Fortescue, you claim to have been in the cupboard with Miss Hampshire at the time of the burglary and simultaneously under the bookcase with Miss Legrand. How did you manage that? Oh, it's a question of timing, really. <laughs> <laughs> a very fast mover. <laughs> to see you under the tiger skin after the show. <laughs> uh, taken and done, ma'am. <laughs> at what? At what? Yes. Oh, moving very fast. Mm. Yes, Hugh. I'd like to ask the maestro what he placed in his top pocket after picking up the ruby. Ah, well, no, um, nothing really. No, I mean, just... that's just a case of being in the in the theatre, you see. I mean, we, uh, we're always very conscious of our appearance, just adjusting my top pocket um, after kneeling down on the carpet and a little brushing down. Mm. Adjusting the handkerchief. Uh, yes, adjusting the handkerchief, yes. It's yes, in the top pocket. Being conscious of our appearance, I suppose, really. Being a, an act. Yes. Yes, well out. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> Bill. Well, why then, Maestro, did you adjust your handkerchief with the hand that you'd taken off the floor and not with, the, not with your hand, which is over the pocket, which is what someone normally does. They do this with the... Why did you bring your other hand up to do it? Because I'm right-handed. Really? Yes, I mean, that's, if I was left-handed, I would do it that way, so yes. Oh, why were you firing the gun left-handed, then? I didn't fire the gun. <laughs> uh, oh. I think you'd better see it again, like actually. Oh. <laughs> that's the bit I want to see that, again. That, <laughs> that's, now we have it absolutely clear, that is the piece that you wanted to see. Yes. No, no, this wasn't the gentleman who fired the gun, it was 18 no. other gentlemen. Oh, I see. The other yeah. one's got more hair. No. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The whole thing is as clear as mud. You're it? absolutely yes. right. We're now ready for the first replay, mm -hmm. and the first replay is this is Prunella Scales. Now you wanted to see Captain Nickinson yes. uh, at the very beginning uh, when the robber hits him on the head, and then he fires his elephant gun. Oh. Stop! Well, you missed the second blast, but there it was. It was there. Did that help you at all, Penelope? Oh, that's good. Splendid. Is there any question you'd like to ask appertaining to that? Not, not at this. Not at this moment. Right, Hugh. Yeah, I'd like to ask why did he fire the gun up in the air in the first place? Ask him, sir. Ask him. Yeah. There he is. Well, why did kill you... the chap? Um, then why did you? Because he can't him? get out. You see. Yes, but why did you shoot at him when you fired the gun downwards? You well, you see, the thing is, I, I shot up in the air. The fella didn't stop. At least what I assumed to be a fella didn't stop. So I thought, well, I'll um, put some holes in his sock, give his wife some work to do. Yeah, and someone remarked you as being an excellent marksman. Yes. Why did you miss? <laughs> it was dark! <laughs> 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 I mean, pitch dark out there. Yes, I don't think he could actually see you. I didn't actually know. If I'd seen anybody, I didn't want to, you know... You, you, you don't know whether you saw anybody at all, then? I assumed I'd seen something. I didn't actually. I think it. you did say that you thought you saw a shadow. I saw something move. Sure, oh, okay. happened to be the baron. I'm glad I yes. didn't. Yes, there goes the buzzer for the second replay. This is Terry Wogan's. You asked for another look at the maestro dropping the ruby on the floor before it was put into the safe. Here it is, coming up any minute. Now, this true. Since it was found in 1776, much blood has been spilled. Oh, oh but no, no. Uh, Sorry. Allow me. Yeah.
magnificent. Yes, Terry. Well, I, I'd just like to ask the Maharaja, who seems, <coughs> if you'll pardon me, welcome to our country, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> I've been enjoying my stay. Yes. So far. Mm. I've, I've never actually heard of, of Banglabad. Do you have a place there? Yes, indeed I do, yes. It, uh, it is a little yellow palace to the north of Kathmandu. <laughs> <laughs> I see but there you which you got not thought there's a mahogany gas pipe. I beg your pardon, sir. Anyway, I see he doesn't even know the language, does he? I, I, think, I think it was your pronunciation that threw me. I think that was Urdu, but you see, in my country, we speak Hindi. A likely story. <laughs> I think actually, Maharaja, that was Bogarish. Uh, <laughs> the same to you. Yes. <laughs> Beautifully timed, the buzzer. This is Hugh Davis's replay. You wanted to see the Maharaja putting his treasure ruby in the safe <coughs> and setting the combination with everyone's back turn. Turn your back, please. Yes. Second. Now what? Ch -ch 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 ah, yes, right. uh, pull the lever. Pull the lever. Yes. Did that help? Yes, it did. It did? Yeah. Any questions? Uh, yes. I'd like to ask Guy Fortescue. Uh, who... Excuse me, Gay. Oh. Gay, uh, gay Fortescue. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, no implication intended, sir. No. I'm sorry, I don't catch your drift. No. You... <laughs> I'm not pushing it, right. Yeah. You. I'd like to ask what you, who you were talking to, uh, what you were talking about. Uh, who I was talking to at, at which point, at the point we've just uh, seen. When you turned around, yes. Yes. Who were you talking to and what was it about? Well, I was talking to the lovely lady here in a delicate shade of pink in front of me and what we were talking about I really think is very private. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, Prue. You got any questions you'd like to ask anybody now? What is the combination? Um, six, uh, four, five, three, I think. But any subsequent? Oh no, that was that was the one that um, Captain Nicholson. You mean? I never saw the other one. Thank you. Oh, you're thinking of that little mirror being held up, were you? Of course. Yes. yes. Well, we're ready for the next and the final replay. Uh, this is uh, Bill Pertwee's. Uh, being a true nature lover, you want to see the pigeon's egg or rather blown Certainly. pigeon's egg <laughs> being put in its natural surroundings. I've laid a few myself. So tell you what, so. shall I show you how we blow them? Mm. All you need is a pin. Oh. Oh. Very well then, ladies, turn your backs. Mm. Now then, hold that, hold that. Ah, there we yeah. are. Good. Yeah, clean as a whistle. Oh. Oh. I think I'll put the egg back in its natural surroundings. Oh, right, sir. Natural surrounding. Very curious. Yes, Bill? All right. Well, yes, first of all, um, I've got a, a question for, for uh, Gillian. Uh, when you were standing next to the maestro, your right leg was next to him when the Maharaja oh, was, it? <laughs> was putting the uh, ruby in the safe, right? Oh. Uh, I never really noticed. I mean, my right leg gets next to lots of right legs. My <laughs> <laughs> <Or> left legs. <laughs> Depending Your on right the leg of <laughs> was next to, to the maestro, yes. yet you only showed PC Ferret your left leg, the garter on your left leg. So could we possibly now see uh, the garter on your right leg? No, you yeah. didn't come. <laughs> 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 Ask a rude question and get a rude answer. <laughs> Trunella, you have a question. Baron, why are you still in England? Well, um, you see, it's quite simple. Because um, I want to be on the winning side, the next war. <laughs> <laughs> and do you still speak fluent German? Oh, yes, of course. Uh, you never forget your native tongue. And you remember a good deal of it, do you? Oh, yes. Are you going to give it's us my a fatherland, you know. Are you going to give us a sample? Uh, ich kann Ihnen einiges erzählen, wenn Sie wollen, natürlich. Ich 
haben viele Flugzeuge geflogen und einiges. It's got to be German, I don't know. That was in fact Hindi. <laughs> Certainly wasn't Bulgarish. <laughs> Questions? Yes, Hugh. I'd like to ask the Baron. Uh, when you're saying you're playing that game called the Kill the Tiger or something, you, you said you're in the garden and going to make your way up the fire escape. Then why did you say when the gun went off you saw a light on the hill from the room? How could you be in the room and going up the stairs at the same time? I did not say I was in the room. I was said I was in the garden and I saw a falling star. Quite right. That's, That's what he did say. Yes. Mr. Tremaine. You're, you've been very quiet, and in fact, uh, you've hardly appeared at all. You've been in the kitchen all the time. He's been stuffing a pike. It's a very large fish. <laughs> <laughs> it takes <laughs> an up. <laughs> Taking you two days to stuff a pike. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you have to kill them first, you see. <laughs> Carry on, Terry. Sorry, don't be put you off. Is that all? Is just it? throwing it up in the air? Oh. <laughs> See if anybody would salute him. They didn't. <laughs> it's like a tripe nulling, you know, in Oakham. Pike stuffing in uh, Lincoln. <laughs> it's, it's got nothing to do with it. We don't want to see a film about that, do we? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sorry. Sorry. Go on, darling. Uh, Captain Nicholson, um, yes. how do you account for this curious phenomenon of the lights that uh, Mr. Tremaine saw? Well, uh, God Have you ever seen anything of the sort in the district? Oh, yeah, well, I see lights outside my, my, my perimeter constantly. I, it was Jack, my gamekeeper, for a start, who is uh, after your... Yeah, oh, I suppose he wouldn't be with a light if he was after a poacher, but uh, he could be coming home from doing the round, certainly. But this falling light that was seen... Well, the Baron says it's a falling star. It's clear night, perfect possible. Either that or a flying poacher. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Man, I invited him. Yeah. Could have been me falling off my bike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, do uh, we haven't established yet whether PC Ferret is in fact a member of the constabulary? Well, establish it, Mr. Bertley. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. I haven't been that for a long time. I'm the local JP, I ought to know. Ah, you only say you're the local JP. We've got oh, no well, proof yes, on here, you know, I see. Please, in fact, can you establish that you, in fact, are not in uh, uh, league with any of the, the residents of the house? Can I establish it? Yes, because I, 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 I saw you on point duty once, and... Um, well, I didn't think you were... Well, I had a bad arm on that day. Ah, that day. could see. have been, yes. Well, Nick, if you, you can come down to the station and be in speech to my sergeant, if you like. Mm, I see, yes. There's no... We, we have, but we have no proof, have we? You can have a look at my notebook. <laughs> <laughs> You've had your one. <laughs> oh, I mean, not having that. <laughs> PC, PC Ferret, you got a watch... On your 21st birthday, you were presented with a watch, weren't you? Mm. And that was 1910. Yes. And it's now 1925. Yes. And that makes you only 36 years of age. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you very much. That, I'm afraid, we must leave it. The time is up, and no last orders are allowed. Right, panel, I want you now to write down who done it and any clues that you may have spotted. And while they're doing that, here is one last clip just for you viewers at home, which may help you to make up your mind, or in fact, change it. See what you make of this. <coughs> I was in the bathroom opposite the gun room. I'd locked the door, turn on the light. I was browsing through the Times newspaper, a number of copies of which were on a shelf. Incidentally, last Thursday's was missing. Uh, thereby mutilating the missing page. Of course, it could be two people. If it was a two-handed well, burglar... Let me assure you that nobody in the studio saw that, so you should be able to get the answer before our panel. Well, let's see which one of them is right, if any. Bill. Thank you. Have you written anything on that? Oh, yes. Well, I say. Prue? Thank you. Terry, thanks very much. Now, panel, I have your card, so you can't cheat when you hear what somebody else says. Right? Now that I uh, have the cards and I want to know now who done it. Go, Terry. Nearly everybody. <laughs> 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 Nearly everybody. I don't like the cut of Nickerson's jib for a start. Right. And that, I... That'll do. Thank you. That's all we want to know. 
Nickerson in league with Gillian Hampshire, the maestro, and Via Le Grand. <laughs> the full orchestra almost again. Yes. Hugh. I thought uh, Gay, Fortescue, and the great maestro, and Nickerson. Mm hmm. Bill? Uh, Nickerson, the Baron, and the gamekeeper. Right, now we'll find out who was right. So will the guilty person or persons who done it please stand up? Mm -hmm. I'm afraid I did it all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Well, congratulations, panel. Uh, well, it, this was all very difficult because you all sort of had it right. Uh, some more right than others, I think. And Hugh, I think being the youngest, gave a pretty good answer. And so as he's the only one allowed to have a prize, I think we will give the prize to Hugh. Well done, <laughs> Hugh. Uh, Hugh, what, what would you like from the set? Uh, the gun, please. The gun? Yes. Yeah, well, we can't give you the actual gun, but we can oh, give no. you a replica, and from the replica you can fire what was done in the show, the ruby itself. All right? Yeah. Will that do? Yeah. Thank you very Thank much you indeed. Much. Right. Now then, just to double-check, I'll now tell you the three clues that gave Nickerson away. Firstly, Thursday's Times newspaper was missing, indicating that the note was made before the guests had even arrived on Friday. Secondly, he said that he never kept the gun loaded, Yet he didn't fire, load to fire, at the supposed burglar. Thirdly, the parachute cartridge was used to fire the ruby over the wall to jack the gamekeeper who held a guiding light and acknowledged the ruby's safe arrival with a flare. Remember the falling star? And as a bonus, he gave the wrong numbers to Tremaine for the safe combination, thus showing how easy it was to open. Now, next week, it's back to murder, and someone drops dead before the poison had been administered. If you think that's impossible, you're wrong. So tune in at the same time next week to find out. Meanwhile, it's good night from our panel and cast. And as this is an age of declining Indian princes, I'm sure that you'd like to know that the Maharaja of Bengalabad's son is now a leading conductor on the Birmingham buses. <laughs> good night.